Hello friends, it's Christy Marcotte. Queen & Company recently released a whole bunch of fun shaped card kits. I figure since I live in Washington State, I'm going to start with the apple. The kit does not include the paper or any of the shaker toppings, so you will need to add those. For my first card, I'm going to use Queen & Company's Petite Patterns. The kit includes the frame die and also the outline die. And then there are four of the foam and acetate pieces. And these all align up together perfectly. So for my card, I have the polka dot paper cut out for the background and then just some solid green cardstock for that frame. The kit includes four of the shaped card bases. So you'll just adhere all of these pieces together for a super simple but cute card. So I always like to hold my outline die to the base just to make sure it's the right direction. I think for the apple it doesn't matter, but for some of the other pieces it will. So I just put some adhesive on the back side of this first piece, and then I can attach my foam. So I'll just pull off the backing and then press this into place. So once that is all in place, I can fill this with toppings. So I'm going to use some of Queen & Company's brand new buttons. I have a few different designs in here, including their new bitty button. And then I also have an assortment of Queen & Company shaker toppings. I forgot to open this pack. I guess I haven't used the green sequins yet. So I'm just starting with some sequins. I also have the green pearlies. And then just to add a little extra sparkle, I'm going to use some of the clear diamonds. Now this is a fairly large shaker card. You can see on my mat, it's just over four inches tall as well as wide. So it does take quite a bit of shaker toppings. Now that really depends on how full you like to have your shaker cards. I like to fill them up quite a bit, especially on these larger ones. So once I have those all filled, I can attach my acetate. And one thing I do wanna mention if you're using the buttons, Make sure you don't have extra toppings on top. Like you don't want any of the little pearlies or the diamonds to be sitting on top of the button when you're sealing everything in place with the acetate. Because then they're going to get stuck there and it's hard to move them off of each other and you're going to have that extra little bump. So now I can go ahead and attach my frame. First I adhered the apple stem and I'm just gonna put some liquid adhesive all around the outside of the foam and then I can adhere this frame in place. I'm just trying to make sure I get it nice and straight and then I'll be attaching a little leaf and the kit does include the leaf as well as that stem die. And now while I let that dry for a moment, I'm gonna work on the sentiment. I used one of Queen & Company's foundation die sets that has this little tag die. I cut that out of some white cardstock, and then I'm gonna stamp the sentiment, made today be sweet, using some brown ink. And before I attach that to my card, I'm going to add some twine. This is some of Queen & Company's trio trims, and I only had this small piece of this iridescent shimmery green twine. So it's the perfect size to add a little bow at the end of my tag. So I just loop that through the hole, tied my bow, and then I'm just gonna snip off the tails. And then to attach it to my card, I'm gonna use some glue dots. I used one of the larger sizes of glue dots, just pressed a few of them to the back side of the tag, and then I can attach it to my card. And now to finish off the card, I'm gonna add just a few more embellishments. I have this yellow flower with a rhinestone in the middle, and this is one of Queen and & Company's. And I'll just use some more glue dots to adhere it to the card. I'm just gonna put it right next to the sentiment on that leaf. And then I pulled out a few jelly gems and petite posies. I'll just add two of those to the tag, and there is the card all finished. I love how the card base is the same shape as the shaker. And the kit also includes four oversized envelopes, so you'll be able to mail your cards. So moving on to my second card, the paper collection is Queen & Company's North Pole Party. And for this card, I'm going to have a non-shaker, 
and I'm also going to make it fit on an A2 size card base. So I have this tone on tone checkered paper for the background and then I just cut about a fourth of an inch strip of this striped pattern paper. So I just adhere that to the lower portion of the card and then I just have some solid green cardstock for another little strip and it's this one's probably about an eighth of an inch wide. And just so I didn't have to deal with any messy liquid adhesive, I used some eighth of an inch score tape, laid it below that striped paper, and then attached that green cardstock strip. I cut the apple out of some specialty red satin paper, and I'm gonna have it going off of the card on the right hand side. So I have it tilted. You can see that right hand edge is going all the way off. And before I firmly press that apple onto that background paper, I'm going to attach the stem. So I'm just tucking it underneath this outline die of the apple. And even though I'm not making a shaker card, I still really liked this stitch frame. So I am gonna add that on top of the background. You could always skip this part because you do end up using more of that specialty paper. I did save that whole inside piece that was cut out since I'll be able to add it to another card later on. So I attach that using some liquid adhesive and now I'll just flip over that card panel and trim off the right hand side so that apple is flush to the edge. And I'm gonna add that onto some green cardstock for this card, my background piece is five and three eighths of an inch by four and one eighth of an inch. So that extra matted layer is just an additional eighth of an inch so I can have my A2 size card base. I decided to use some scrap green glitter cardstock for the leaf. I thought it went nicely with the specialty paper in the apple. I used some liquid adhesive to glue it to my card and just put an acrylic block on top just to make sure it adhered nicely. Now for the sentiment, I used one of Queen & Company's foundation die sets for this banner, stamped out, if friends were apples, I'd pick you. I just used some green ink for that. And then I trimmed off the right hand side so it would be flush on the card. And then before I place it down, I'm just trying to figure out where I want to attach these little green flowers. So I have two different green flowers. One of them is close to the shade of the paper, and then there's one that's just slightly darker. And then I'll attach those using some small glue dots. And I do end up fussing with these flowers just a bit. I think I should have cut that banner just a little bit longer since I didn't leave myself a lot of space to add the flowers. But I think it still turned out just fine. And now to finish off the card, I have an assortment of Queen & Company bling. I'm using some of their brand new ice flowers. These are really fun. They come in, I think, eight different colors. Then I also have some red frosties and red jelly gems and then also some green jelly gems. At least I pulled them out and then I changed my mind and just used the red ones. And I kept trying to decide where I could add more of the ice flowers since I really like them. But I changed my mind and just went with a few more of the red frosties. And I put two of them on that upper area on the apple. I think that tied in nicely with the rest of the card. And now I'll just go ahead and adhere my card front onto a card base. Not sure why I hadn't attached this yet. I usually do before I start adding any of the bling. And there is my finished card and this fits just perfectly inside an A2 size envelope. So now moving on to my third card. I'm gonna make a yellow apple this time. For the sentiment, I'm gonna stamp it directly on the background paper. So this is gonna be inside the shaker. And the sentiment is to an A plus teacher. I know we are out of school right now, but someday we're gonna be able to give cards to the teachers again. So I'm gonna have one ready to go. The paper collection is the petite patterns. So I'm just gonna attach this background piece. Instead of the polka dot side, I decided to use the chevron side. And then for the frame of the apple, I cut this out using some of Queen & Company's glittery foam. 
So I did save the inside of that apple since I'll be able to use it on other elements of cards later on. I'm just adhering the foam piece of the apple so I can start filling this shaker with different toppings. I have a bunch of different buttons all in the yellow color. And I do make sure the buttons are facing the direction I want them because if you put them in upside down, you won't be able to flip them later when it's all sealed in place. For the rest of the toppings in the card, I have some yellow pearlies, some yellow diamonds, and then also some of the little star. I think this is the Fimo collection. Just wanted to fill it all with pretty yellow toppings with a little extra sparkle. I felt like I needed just a little bit more. One way you can check is if you sort of push down the toppings, you'll see how full it's going to be. Since you don't want to lift up your card, you're going to get toppings everywhere. And those little pearlies really can roll around in your craft room. Now that I have the acetate in place, I can attach this glittery frame. Now, if you do use the glitter foam for your frame, just know that when you run it through your die cut machine, it does stretch it out just a little bit. So it's slightly larger than it would be if you just use paper, but it still works and it's easy to sort of manipulate it around the edge. And the glitter foam is easy to use since it's self-adhesive. So you just pull off that backing and then stick it right in place. For this card, I'm gonna have two different leaves. One of them is cut out of the petite patterns in green, and then the other is just some solid green cardstock. So I'll attach these to the card using some glue dots. And I'm trying to make sure not to cover up the sentiment at all. I may have put that sentiment a little high on the card. I probably could have went just slightly lower, but I think this still worked out just fine. And now to finish off the card, I'm just gonna add one final touch. This is one of Queenie Company's glitter flowers. I just put some glue dots on the back and then I just attached it right underneath that stem. Super easy and fun card to make. Now here's just another look at the three cards I made using Queen & Company's Apple Shaped Card Kit. I have provided links in the description box if you are interested in purchasing this kit or any of the other brand new shaped card kits. Eventually, I will have videos for all of the new shaped card kits, so be sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any of those videos. I definitely have plenty of craft supplies to keep me busy during this stay at home time. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.